Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so Monday almost lunchtime here in Australia and the markets are up again, it's up 1.5%, not a whole lot. We're still waiting for Monday morning stateside time to kind of see exactly where the market's going to go. Will it dip down just a little bit first thing and then rock it up or have we sort of hit a ceiling again getting close to that $50,000 mark and was this actually just a bull trap? I don't know about that, but we'll have to wait and see. It's something to keep in mind. So anyway, let's move on. Market in total up 1.5%. That's nice. And over that $2 trillion mark, just how high can we go? You know, can we get to $3 trillion? Can we get to $5 trillion? Can we get to $10 trillion? I think eventually, absolutely, we'll get to $10 trillion. I'm just not sure we can make it this time. I'm thinking more, maybe somewhere between sort of three to $5 trillion, definitely possible. So, you know, we could round it off and say sort of $4 trillion. I think thereabouts would be a, a somewhat reasonable guess. We could go a whole lot higher. Again, we could go five, six trillion, but we could also go lower. Maybe we don't really get over three trillion dollars. Again, I think that's unlikely, but it's just a consideration that I have, something I'm keeping in mind. All right, Bitcoin dominance continues to fall. And I think, you know, in this last part of this run, Bitcoin will continue to fall, but it's not to say it won't still have its pumps. I mean, if Bitcoin sort of breaks that $50,000 mark, I think it's really going to start to run. That will just be one of those psychological levels that I think will really help the price move because, I mean, all the altcoins are already starting to run. So we could see Bitcoin dominance drop down to maybe the low 40%. Bitcoin gets above that $50,000 mark and then rises and gets back up to close to sort of 50% before falling back down again. Again, just something I'm thinking, no guarantees in life. Look, $330 billion for the 24-hour volume, so not too bad. And we haven't even got to the uh, you know, first part of trading yet. Bitcoin price, again, 47000 getting close to the 48000 and getting close to that you know, $50,000 mark. I think we break that $50,000 mark uh, and, and even somewhere sort of fifty to $52,000 mark, there's some sort of resistance there, I'm pretty sure. I think the markets will start to move very quickly. Gas price is holding pretty good. Like $3.70, considering how bullish things are. Yeah, very, very interesting. And again, we'll have to wait and see. You know, is there going to be a repeat of the three, four, five hundred dollar you know, gas prices? before this is all over and particularly before ETH 2.0 has its full rollout because once that happens allegedly we're never supposed to see that and gas prices will be never will never be more than like a couple of cents hopefully you know never more than a dollar again it's all the unknown we're still waiting to see exactly what happens with that but look three dollars 69 for gas prices compared to you know 10 20 30 dollars you know i can live with it for now all right Again, bit of a mixed bag. Some things doing well, some things, you know, having a bit of a pullback. ADA, I mean, it went on a tear. You can expect that it was going to have a pullback. But generally, again, up 1.5%. So what are the biggest movers? What's done the best? Whew, Ravain had a nice pump there, 28%. Solana making moves. Terra Luna, we're going to have a look at that. Uh, doing quite well. Dogecoin doing all right as well. And uh, One Harmony, so couple of nice double digit moves and then we got plenty of you know nice single digit moves and again we'll take any gain any day over a loss but some things have outperformed others there we go Solana just jumped up a little bit really doing well what about losses though has anything not done so well in the last 24 hours ah oh, safe moon <laughs> it's just a two or three that's where it sits all right uh content value network also dropped a little bit waves you know, Voyager, again, they had a good pump, so of course there was going to be a bit of a pullback. Uh, we spoke about ADA. Synthetics, it really is just kind of chopping and changing between anywhere from sort of $8 to around about sort of $14 thereabouts. So I did uh, swap some of my synthetics, uh, swap some for some USD, swap some for some, uh, what was it, XRP. And I think I'll swap some for something else, but I just can't remember off the top of my head. But basically, I'm just taking profits. I made some good money with synthetics. I'm unsure about where they're going to go with the regulatory sort of stuff. Still got a bag of it. I've got a moon bag that I just basically won't sell because I've got it for under a dollar. So I may as well just kind of let it ride. And the rest of it, yeah, taking some sort of profits. Again, just because of the regulatory thing, the regulatory uh, kind of space that we're in. All right. 
the Bitcoin chart. This was very, very interesting. Have a look at this, the 200 day moving average. Uh, rejection, didn't even quite get there, but rejected. Didn't quite get there, rejected. Finally, you can see right here, I'll move that out of the way. Bitcoin bounced and used it as support instead of resistance perfectly. This is bullish. We are above the 200 day moving average and using it as support as opposed to, you know, maybe dipping over it and then falling back under it, you know, jumping and changing between that. And we are back in this long term trending upwards channel. As I said the other day, just based on this, by the August 21st, 22nd, sorry, the upside for Bitcoin is nearly 100,000. And again, look, we were breaking out above this at stages. So I'm not saying it's going to do that in the next couple of days. I'm just saying this is right at the bottom of the channel at the moment. This is, you know, again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. I feel like it could be a good place to buy. But we have had a good pump and no kind of major pullbacks. So we might actually see a pullback and again, come back down and retest 42,000 before we then start to go back up again. Completely possible, I think not likely, but again, you never know. Now, as I said, that kind of 50-ish, so here, sort of 50,000 up to about sort of $52,000. This is where we need to break that and really you can say that we are, there's not really much stopping us. You know, there's very little difference between this top, which is about 59,000, 64,000, and this one at about sort of 62,000. They're all basically the same thing. This is the real key resistance here. We need to break above that kind of, again, you know, 49,800 you can say, but let's just round it up to 50,000 to get to about here. And again, we can just round it up to 52,000. Once we get through that, I think you're gonna see things start to move really, really fast. That's when people uh, are going to start wanting to pile in. And look, even institutions, we spoke the other day, they're all jumping into Bitcoin at the moment. Uh, so the GBTC through Grayscale, they are all loading up at these prices. So what does that tell you? They expect it to go a whole lot higher and they no longer think it's going to go lower and you know if this was manipulation which i think it was the manipulators did the best they could they wanted to get it down to twenty eight thousand. they got it to wick down there they wanted it to go below allegedly that's the news we've been provided uh, and they just couldn't do it that was as good as they could they could do and now they are just going to let it run so yeah very very interesting look i just want to show you a couple of altcoins that i brought to your attention quite some time ago so I got into Terra Luna back on, I think, May, January, March, April, May, I think it was 25th. Uh, so where are we? Around about here. So about sort of $6 I bought it. And now look where we are. It's already up at $20. So I've done quite well off that. I did buy some more uh, at a later date as well. But again, this is where the big money is kind of made. Don't get me wrong, you can go back a year and buy it a whole lot cheaper. But when everyone else is panicking and doesn't want to buy, particularly if you can buy something 50% below its old all-time high, that's a good starting point. I'm not saying jump in and again, never financial advice, but it means, and again, you st it needs to be a good project, something that's not dying and it's not you know fading away because it's about to be you know regulated out of existence and things like that. If it's just a simple correction, 50% or more is a good place to buy, in my personal opinion. Now, I'm not saying dive in all at 50% because it could go down all the way to 90%, but start to kind of, you know, dollar cost average your way in, as opposed to dollar cost averaging your way into things that are already going up, and particularly things that are already above their old all-time highs. That is where it starts to get a little dangerous. That is the hardest part about investing, and even it took me a long time to be able to do it, is now I look to buy things when they're on the way down, not when they are on the way up. It's not to say that I don't buy anything on the way up, but I'm looking to put my money in when things are somewhere between 50 plus percent uh, from their old all-time highs, because that means I'm going to, at the very least, double my money when they get back to their old time old all-time highs and I mean that can be an if because some things don't and they will you know die for whatever reason but generally that is what I'm looking for and so I started to buy in at about this six dollars knowing that it had been as high as twenty two dollars 
I bought it six dollars. It's basically a three and a half x, nearly a four x back to its old all time high. And again, I bought some more uh, not too long ago for around about the same price. I think six or seven dollars thereabouts. So Luna looking quite nice. I think I'm up 200% on my Luna. This has been one of my better performing altcoins since I bought the dip. And as always, I only wish I had have bought more. I really didn't buy too much at all and I'm kicking myself now, but that's the way it is. Theta token, uh, likewise, uh, not doing, look, as good as the other ones, but I really like Theta and I wanted to get into a good price uh, without buying it, you know, all time highs. And I mean, have a look at here. This is just since July. It's been doing all right. I can't remember what price I bought Theta at, but at the moment, I mean, it's looking quite nice at around $7. I think I bought it around about sort of $5.40 or something like that, around about here, August uh, 2nd. So literally not too long ago, but I also bought some uh, back in sort of very uh, late July. Uh, so again, I think sort of $5-ish. And Theta is one of my long-term holds. Will it be... You know the next big thing in you know that kind of you know YouTube space but the decentralized version I don't know but I, I was kicking myself that I didn't get in and it started to do extremely well so I built myself a position got just enough to stake so I got just over a thousand theta got it staking and we'll just wait and see look if it goes to nothing it's a small portion of my portfolio but if it actually does take off and do extremely well like I think it might well, then, you know, I've got my pos myself a position where I'm staking some. All right, another one, Chili's. So again, I was buying all down this. Chili's hasn't taken off yet, but I was literally buying it at sort of 30-ish cents. And now look where it is. It's already up about sort of 40 cents. Now, again, I was buying it sort of 30 cents and under. I think I've got some at 33 cents at the highest, and I've got some down around sort of 27, 28 cents. But look at this basing pattern base formation this was basing for such a long time hardly moving and now it's just starting to make that uptick look where it's been it's been to 89 cents i buy it at basically sort of 30 cents and it gets to 80 uh basically 90 cents we can round it off to 90 cents i triple my money again chilies is something that i wanted to get into i felt like i'd missed it once this dip came i knew this is something i wanted to get into haven't made a fortune or a killing on it at the moment and I didn't put everything into it either, but I now have a pay, uh, a uh, excuse me, I now have a position, I was trying to say space and place all at the same time, I now have a position in Chili's, and I am expecting that it goes to, you know, 90 cents and above. So again, not financial advice, just my personal opinion, but you want to buy things when they are cheap, not when they are high, not when they're already starting to pump. And again, I've said this before, it's not that you can't make money on something that's already starting to pump, but you've missed the best gains. You want to buy when everyone else is out and saying, no, nah, I'm not touching that stuff, I'm done, it's going to zero, blah, blah, blah. And again, still do your research. Don't just dive into anything because it's 50% down. It could still be going a whole lot lower. Level in, scale in like you scale out. All right, Voyager token. Now, this is something that has done extremely well for me. Uh, I think I was buying this for $2, $3, something like that. And here we are, we're getting up to a, sort of $4. So again, I've made nearly 100% on my money. And I do expect it to go to $7 and above. So again, I think I started to buy in sort of in and around here, July going all the way down. And it was scary. I, I watched it go down and down and down. And I thought, you know, like most people do, have I made the right decision? and then it just started to go up. So again, this is where we wanna buy. When everyone's basically had enough, it's at massive discounts from its old all-time highs, and if it keeps going down and you believe in the project, continue to buy on the way down, because once it starts to go up, and eventually it will if it's a good project, it's just a correction, once it get back to its old all-time highs, you will have scaled in all the way sort of down, or at least 50% down and above. So once it gets back to its old all-time high, your profits will be insane. Again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. Last but not least, XRP. Whew, hasn't this gone on a rocket? Uh, I think I was buying it around about sort of 80 cents. I think I was sort of in and around sort of here. I bought some. Uh, a little bit before August 8th, 
Uh, still got some back in here and again look where we are now tipped up to about a dollar thirty and now we're back down around a uh, dollar twenty something a <sighs> dollar sixty sounds good to me I have no doubt it's going to get there I also think it's going to go above its old three dollar eighty price target so the XRP that I bought at eighty ish cents if it gets to again we can round it up to four dollars of forex and some my money so these are the kind of things that I'm looking for. I want to buy when everyone basically is out saying, nah, it's the wrong time to buy. It's only going to go lower. I'm happy to get in. Again, don't just jump in because it could be going a whole lot lower. But for me, I'm looking to buy things at 50 plus percent discounts. If it's not that, I generally, again, it needs to be in a downtrending market, not an uptrending market. You've missed that. You're going to have to wait for that. But in a downtrending market, when things are 50% plus on sale from their old all-time highs, that's where I'm looking to get in. That's how I'm trying to maximize my gains. All right, that's it from me. Bit of a quick one today. There's not a whole lot going on. We're waiting for, again, the markets to reopen stateside uh, Monday morning and see what happens from there. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Should all be on that gain train at the moment. Things are looking pretty good. And I'll see you next time.